So welcome to another edition of the Wound Care Window. I would like to uh, illustrate the effects of diabetes from a uh, neuropathy standpoint. When patients have diabetic neuropathy, they have insensate portions of their foot, they have foot abnormalities, this becomes a weight-bearing surface, and they will develop callus over those areas of weight-bearing. You see the callus build up in this area. The callus can hemorrhage, uh, it can f form ulcers, and this certainly needs to be debrided, and we're gonna do that. You'll notice that there's another area of callus formation here on the distal toe. So this uh, callus formation can be in multiple areas of the foot. This is typically debrided. Uh, I like to use a curette uh, when I do my debridements. And uh, I use the curette because uh, it is a very controllable instrument. It is sharp as a scalpel, but yet very controllable. Uh, many folks will debride this type of callus with uh, a scalpel. I find that the control is less than optimal, less than desirable, and that's why I use a curette. I use a raking motion to take down the callus. We start at the margins, and what I need to do is determine the extent of the ulceration, the depth, uh, the amount of undermining if there's any, if there's an ulcer formed uh, that is formed underneath it. And I like to do that by sort of dealing with the tip of the iceberg first, the external margins, the callus on the margins, and slowly take this down. And then I work my way centrally to further define the ulcer. Do this for a number of reasons. If you just dive into the center of the ulcer, uh, you may get into some viable tissue that bleeds. The bleeding will then obscure your debridement. And we obviously don't want that. As you'll see, I'm raking my curette across the surfaces, slowly taking layers of the callus down to again define the extent of this callus and determine whether there's an ulcer formed underneath it. Diabetics uh, not only have neuropathy, but callus is fairly insensate. So typically you're not too worried about uh, pain that might otherwise be associated with a debridement. Obviously, pain is also always a consideration, but <clears throat> I always ask the patients to tell me if I'm hurting you. When obviously, when I'm debriding, I'm not looking at their face, so I can't monitor the pain myself. They have to tell me if what I'm doing is hurting them. Obviously, our patient here is showing us that he is not feeling this to any significant degree. You might ask yourself, how do I know when I've done enough debridement of the callus? <clears throat> what I like to do is evaluate the callus with my thumb and compare that to the normal tissue. If the callus area feels just like the normal tissue, you've done enough and you can stop. And right now, this area here feels pretty much like the normal tissue, so I'm good here. Obviously, there's other areas, and this is still pretty firm, so we're going to do some more work up in this region. Once you have to breathe the callus around the area well, we start working centrally to, again, determine if there's an ulcer, and if so, the extent of that ulceration. And what you'll see is that this is certainly through the dermis. When we have an ulcer lesion that is, uh, violates only the dermis, we obviously have a Wagner 1 ulcer. When that ulcer extends into the subdermal, into the subcutaneous tissues, or involves uh, deeper structures, we have a Wagner 2 ulcer. So this is classified right now as a Wagner 2 ulcer. I am certainly going to get imaging, we're going to get some plain films. If those films show any evidence of involvement of the bone from an osteitis standpoint, from an osteomyelitis standpoint, or if my imaging delineates any type of infectious process like abscess, that would then place us into a Wagner 3 category. As uh, you saw earlier, this patient does not have any gangrenous changes of the tissue or the digits. 
but if the gangrene was present, we then classify as a Wagner 4. And if we have complete forefoot necrosis, tissue destruction, that would be a Wagner 5. Fortunately, we have not progressed to a Wagner 4 or 5 here. I also suspect that this is probably not a Wagner 3. It is very superficial. It does not probe to bone. And I suspect our initial imaging studies will be negative for any type of bony involvement or destruction. So this is an adequate debridement of a patient that um, presented with a diabetic foot ulcer. This is uh, the first uh, step in managing this patient.